Today we're going to be looking at the double validation method for versatile assigner. We are looking at a ubiquitine protein uh, spectrum here, uh, solution NMR. You can pick any point that you'd like to start from, but you are going to need to link a few strips first. Um, namely, you're going to need to label or uh, link about five to six strips it generally takes because each validation is going to take around three residues. You can do it in two, you could do it in five, generally about three residues per validation. So we're going to need about five to six. Now starting here, we're going to need to pull up versatile assigner, VA two letter code. Here. And uh, here on the top, we have some information. We have nitrogen, hydrogen, and NH information. Go ahead and turn all those off if you'd like, or you can keep them on if your uh, nitrogen is from the I residue. I prefer to have them off. Here, we're going to need to set our sequence file. You can set that there. Or, of course, you can use two-letter code SQ which will pull up the sequence file for the entire project, and you can set it there. Next, what we're going to want to do, we're going to want to use two-letter code IR, which will bring up the reference spectra. There are three reference spectra, the first being the carbon alpha and beta. This comes up here. Oh, I was not typing in Sparky. IR bring up the references. Here on this first one we have carbons alpha and beta for all of the assignments and where those lo are located. Here you can see if we jump over to the strip plot um, as you move through your carbon resonance carbon dimension you'll see where the cursor lines up on the reference so we can go say here and we know that uh, this peak because these two line up, these are clearly from the I-1. We can see here that this must be a G, because you can see on the reference spectra it lines with only carbon alpha this high up, uh, and G only has the 1, so this we can manually assume is a G, but we will continue on showing the versatile assigner and how it will take care of this. Um, so you're going to need these open, so I'll go ahead and minimize them. We also have a 1 for all of the hydrogens, and then our third reference spectra here, we have all of the carbons. So now that those are open in the background, we can go ahead and set our walking distance. I'm walking forward. You can also do this walking backwards if you'd like. Or if you'd like to go in either direction, you can have it work for either direction. But I'm going to go ahead and set mine as forward. This will give me more accurate results. So we're going to start here by using the carbons alpha and beta of our first residue. Predict here at the top left, and it'll show us all of the predictions for all of the amino acids. And uh, generally, we're only going to pay attention to the above 5%, uh, although sometimes that can be misleading. There are some times where uh, predictions will fall under 5%. And so here we can see down in in your sequence, we can see all of our residues which have, or all of our amino acids that are T in our sequence. Uh, with only one residue, versatile assigner won't be able to do anything for you but assign it. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and append all five above 5%. This is going to put them all in our I minus 1 history. That way we can move to a new I residue. And here we can see that it comes from right here and here. So we're going to go ahead and predict, predict the second residue. We see we have L as a high chance. You can see that if this were to be L, and given that these um, in our history of I minus 1 are correct, uh, it's going to show you everything that this could be. So this could be T7L8, or it could be T14L15, etc., etc. And we're going to want to click on all of these above 5% because we want to know all of the chances of what this subsequence could be. You can see D has nothing to show here. 
So we'll go back to L. Because this is not 100%, we are not guaranteed which one um, of these sequences is correct. So we're going to go ahead and push down our I minus 1 to I minus 2, and we're going to append all of these new um, sequence, this new residue information into the history, I minus 1. We're going to go ahead and move on to our third residue here. So it's like this one and this one. We're going to go ahead and predict that. And here we, we see T, uh, T is most likely the correct um, assignment. And we can see that down here as well. There's only one place in the spectrum, or in the uh, sequence that goes T, L, T, which is 7, 8, 9. So we have now validated this. However, uh, a single validation is prone to error. Let's say that this L8 uh, was actually, let's say somewhere else in the spectrum we had T44, uh, we'll go V45 and T46. Well, if this L was actually supposed to be a V, it was validated incorrectly, um, we could be looking at the wrong part of our uh, protein here. So what we're going to do is we're going to double validate. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to clear all of this out. And the same residue that we just used in the first validation, we're going to go ahead and pen that we're going to start a new one with this as our, our starting residue. Uh, so let's just move the strip plots over here. We will continue on with this pattern. Uh, this is our next residue here. This is quite clearly a G. Uh, and yes, it agrees with us. Now, a two residue validation. Um, it is viable. However, I personally do not like how little information I have here, so I'm going to continue. Um, and ah, yes, so again, you need to go through all of the residues above 5%. And we can see that if this were to be L, there are multiple chances here. Uh, so this could be L or G. So uh, we're going to need to keep going. So we're going to go ahead and push down, append all above 5%, get that in the history, and we're going to move on to our next residue here. So this looks like this one. This one here and predict. And now we're going to go through these new ones. Uh, we can see here that uh, both K and E uh, has a 100% chance at being this sequence or this sequence. But of course, we can't trust that because uh, when we click on these, it is assuming that this assignment is correct. And so we need all of these above 5% to only have a single possibility. So we're going to go ahead and keep going. We're going to push down, append all above 5%. We're going to move on to our next residue here. And hopefully this will be uh, the one that shows us uh, the full validation, the double validation. So we're going to go ahead and predict that. Uh, and we only have one above 5% here. It's a T. And there you go. So this is saying that there is only one spot that could possibly be T, G, K, T in that order walking forward, and that is T9, G10, K11, T12. So we have now validated through this double validation method that all of these are correct. And the reason that this validation method works is because of this assignment right here, T9. T9 was in both of them. So there is a guarantee that you did not have that uh, issue where one of your residues was a different, uh, was an incorrect assignment because this T here uh, has to match both in assignment as well as place in sequence. And because those two things line up, that is a double validation. And so we can go ahead and start assigning these. And if you'd like to assign these directly from Versatile Assigner, you keep these highlighted, these, spec, or these uh, peaks that you're looking at. And you go ahead and you click on which residue it is. So here we are in the last residue. We are on T12. If I just double, double click T12 here in in your sequence box, it'll go ahead and throw labels on there for you. And uh, you can also do this with the Z, B, C, A, C, O, and H. This will label them for you as well. You can also come to something like your NHSQC and uh, versatile assignment over here. If we look at which, let's see, 
came from came from this one right here. So we can go ahead and again double click on that T12 and it'll pop up with your assignment. Obviously this is going to be the I plus one nitrogen information so that is why it is I13 and not T12. And you have now double validated. So I hope that helps.